we're going to show you how we make pizza when we're bike touring. So as you can see, we're in this beautiful natural camping spot in Denmark. Uh, we do have access to water. There's a water tap not too far away. And that's pretty much the only thing that you need to make sure you have before you start making pizza on the road. Because it's quite a messy procedure, as you'll see. But it is a lot of fun and it tastes really good. And it impresses all your friends. So, to make pizza, I've got about a cup and a half of flour. And I just use the standard cups that we drink out of. This will make a small batch. If I was making it for a lot of people, I would use three or four cups of flour at least. Um, and then I've got about half a cup of water. So this is self-rising flour, by the way. So if you can't find self-rising flour, just buy normal flour and a little bit of baking powder. Put in about a spoonful of baking powder for every cup of flour, and then you're good to go. So about a cup and a half of self-rising flour and some water in here. Just pour it in, and then just mix it up with the spoon. Now that half a cup of water isn't really quite enough, but I just start with a little bit and then add a bit more. The reason I start with a little bit is that if you add too much, you end up with a lot of goop, which takes a lot more flour to make it into dough again. So start small and uh, then just add a tablespoon or two at a time and see how you go. Now the great thing about this recipe is that it can be used to make not just pizza, but also cinnamon bread. So instead of putting pizza fillings in, you can also put cinnamon and sugar. And today we're actually going to do garlic bread with mozzarella. So I've got my flour all mixed up. And now what I'm going to do is take some more flour from the bag and spread it out on the little cutting board that we have here. And this cutting board is actually just a sheet of plastic. Um, it's a reasonably tough sheet of plastic. You might be able to see there how um, stiff it is. And you can usually find these in dollar stores. Sometimes they have what they call disposable cutting boards. And they sell three or four for a couple dollars. Or sometimes in shops they sell the same sort of thing as plastic placemats. So I'm just scraping the dough out here. You can see it's quite sticky. Now we're going to knead it. Make sure you've washed your hands before you do this. And after a long day of bike touring, they get pretty dirty. This is where your hands will get messy, but that's part of the fun. Sprinkle lots of flour on there. And you'll see very quickly how the dough starts to come together. It will absorb a lot of flour, probably about another, for every cup of flour you put into the recipe, it'll probably absorb another half a cup almost when you're kneading it. So make sure you have lots on hand. Just a bit more flour on here until I feel that it stops sticking. And you can feel as you add more flour, it will stop sticking quite so easily to your hands and that's when you know it's just about ready to roll it. If I pat it there, you can feel that it's not coming up quite so easily. A little bit more and it should be ready. And that's all there is to it. Unlike normal pizza that you would make at home, we're not going to leave this to rise at all. It's self-rising flour as I said or normal flour with a bit of baking powder so it will rise on its own in the pan when we cook it. That's the other great thing about this recipe. You don't need a backpack or oven. We're just going to cook it in a frying pan. So I've cut it into about what I think is a good sized portion for our frying pan. And the next thing we're going to do is roll it out. Now, if you were at home, you'd use a rolling pin, of course. We don't carry a rolling pin with us on the road. Even though we travel quite heavily, we're not that crazy. But what we do carry is a thermos. And it turns out that a thermos makes a great rolling pin. So. Roll it out. If you find like now you'll see that it, this is stuck a little bit to the board, that means it probably just needs a bit more flour. So if that's happening to you, again, reach into your bag of flour, add a bit more, and try again. It's a very forgiving recipe. So. we're going to 
going to aim here for is roughly a circle, not too thin. So it doesn't have to be perfect. And usually what I like to do, once I've got it roughly to the shape I want, I just put a bit more flour down there because if it sits too long, it does tend to stick a little. I said that today we're making um, a sort of garlic bread. So the way I like to do this, instead of tomato sauce, which you, you would use with a pizza, uh, here I'm putting on a little bit of butter. And I've got some garlic, which I've chopped up before. I've got some seasonings. And the final touch is mozzarella. Some mozzarella here. Put it all in. Be quite generous with the cheese. And now this is the trick. Now if you think of a pizza, normally a pizza you cook it flat out in one big round. Well because we have to cook this in a pan, we're going to make it into a sort of calzone. So we just fold it over like this. Pinch it down. Fold over the ends if you want, and now it's ready to cook. And that's really all there is to it. If you were doing pizza, you'd fill it with tomato sauce and whatever fillings you want. If you want to make cinnamon bread, you just do butter and cinnamon and sugar. And then you cook it in the frying pan, and Andrew's going to show us how we do that. Mm -hmm.